do I enjoy these videos, but I also get to wear festive earrings for every episode. So it's the little things that keep you going. Hey y'all, I'm Indigo and welcome to episode 11 of the Goosebump Summary Series. Let's go over books 31 to 33. Oh boy, my favorite. It's time for Night of the Living Dummy 2. Ooh. Even that cover art creeps me out. We have three siblings this time. Amy is the main character and she's jealous of her sister Sarah because she's just such a great painter. Amy is into ventriloquism with her dummy Dennis, but their little brother Jed doesn't think he has any kind of talent. Unfortunately, their dad brings Slappy into the house as a gift to Amy. You can imagine the horror that ensues. Slappy throws out his usual insults at people and even destroys Sarah's paintings when everyone is asleep. The parents are convinced that Amy is doing these things and even seek to get her some counseling. Amy tries to tell them to believe that it isn't her and she decides to stay up at night to see who's doing all this stuff. She proves to Jed that the dummy is the one causing all the trouble and it's even revealed Sarah saw him do it too but let Amy take the blame because she was jealous of her and wanted to get her into trouble. After some sweet forgiveness hugs, they devise a plan to throw Slappy into the sewer but you all know that he returns. Then. They get Jed to dress up as Dennis to fight Slappy. They catch him in another devious act and their plan works. Slappy's head cracks open and a giant worm slithers out of his broken skull and under the molding. Sarah and Amy congratulate Jed on his great work, but he tells them he didn't do it. But if Jed didn't fight Slappy, who did? <coughs> cough, it's Dennis. Ugh, the other dummy, cough. Ugh. <laughs> What I appreciate about this sequel is that it's not just a rehashing of the same characters like in the Monster Blood series. It's very good. Now we come to the Barking Ghost. Though it's not always the case, I am noticing a lot of the protagonists in these books move to a new house. I wouldn't say it's part of the Goosebumps formula that I explained in my first video, but it is something I did fail to mention. So Cooper and his older brother Mickey aren't sleeping very well on the first night in their new house. Cooper is particularly antsy and he notices some barking ghost dogs that vanish before his eyes. Cooper meets a girl named Fergie who tells him to run away as fast as he can, only to be chased by two black labs that suddenly disappear. He tries to tell his parents, but his dad becomes extra frustrated by the ghost dog story and tells him to just be quiet about it. Barking seems to follow Cooper everywhere and he can't figure out why. Though Fergie and Mickey come together to spook Cooper to mess with him a bit, it still didn't explain why he was seeing ghost dogs everywhere. While Fergie works with Cooper to pay back Mickey for his cruel teasing, Fergie realizes that she can hear the barking too. They encounter the ghost dogs, believing that they will be attacked, but instead it seems they only want the children to follow them. It turns out that the ghosts are actually people, and the only way to leave those ghost bodies is to find other victims to switch with. They are successful at first, and now Cooper and Fergie are ghosts while their bodies are stolen. They race to corner the fake kids in order to get their bodies back. They manage to switch bodies, but with a pair of chipmunks. This is probably on the same level of annoying as why I'm afraid of bees. Ridiculous. But the next book makes up for it. The Horror at Camp Jelly Jam is probably one of my favorite books in the series. We begin with Elliot and Wendy panicking on a runaway trailer that crashes into a campsite. A strange counselor named Buddy comes to meet them and says that while they're waiting for their parents to find them, they should try to win some king coins. They take part in many sports related activities and they notice the other campers are taking it a bit too seriously. Some of the other campers have gotten enough king coins to win a special prize, only later to go missing. They find that the kids with the most king coins were taken to be enslaved to a giant monster named King Jelly Jam that smells like Brussels sprouts and sweats snails. In order to keep it appeased and not stinky, they need fit children to clean him off constantly. 
The camp counselors feel trapped and don't know what to do. The children decided to stop cleaning King Jelly Jam and let him suffocate on his own stink. It works! And the police arrive as he dissipates into nothing. Time goes by and Buddy pays Eddie and Wendy a visit to give them one last king coin. These are such great stories. Please do me a favor and subscribe so you don't miss any more content. Thank you so very much for watching.